Why do you do what you do? There's something about our profession that seems to prompt this question more than almost any other profession. That is especially true for those of us who work with middle schoolers. <laughs> for me, that question has evolved, the answer to that question has evolved over time. You see, I never wanted to be a teacher and being an administrator was never something I saw in my future, ever. Ask my high school teachers, they tell you. Until after. As a first generation college attendee who grew up in poverty and learned to very successfully um, hide what was a chaotic and dysfunctional and damaging home life, I happened to be the lucky product of what I now know to be a very flawed and tracked system. I was a great test taker. I had a mom who said yes when they said, do you want her to take these challenge tests? But Chance, some great teachers, an older sister who's very type A, and went before me and paved my way to college, get a lot of credit for me being here. And I never wanted to be a teacher until after. My entry into the world of education was reactive, pure and simple. I was reacting to a pain so raw and so real and so deep, I sometimes wondered if I would lose myself to it. That pain entered my life on February 2nd, 1996, in the days before the term school shooting was part of our everyday vernacular. On that freezing day in my hometown of Moses Lake, Washington, a mentally ill young man who had access to his family's guns walked into the junior high I had attended 10 years earlier. The junior high where my, my witty, sarcastic, slightly awkward, actually incredibly awkward, and very intelligent little brother, Arnie, was a student. In a matter of minutes, my sweet Arnie, a classmate, and one of his teachers were all gone. Another classmate was gravely injured, and countless lives would never be the same. Students, teachers, staff that witnessed that horror, the first responders and the families. The community of loss from this horrific tragedy is wide, and the healing is ongoing. Arnie, Mrs. Kyrus, Manuel, I speak your names, but there are no words to adequately describe the voids left by your deaths. A seed was planted in my soul that day, demanding that I do something. In the years that would follow, I worked with homeless youth in Spokane and in Seattle. I used my voice and my vote to advocate for common sense gun laws and for access to mental health resources. But with every part of my being, I needed to be a part of the system that was working with kids every day, tirelessly, working for all kids. So why do I do what I do? The why that brought me to education, that brought me to the classroom, was the loss of my brother. It was reactive. But two years into my teaching career, I still hadn't found my why within that system. I was naive, I was young, I was passionate, and I had a heck of a lot of learning to do. <laughs> Thankfully, I was teaching in a very progressive district whose vision and mission held that all students could achieve at high levels. And I was invited to a meeting by my principal where our superintendent showed us this 60 Minutes video on this program called AVID. Yeah, you're laughing because a lot of you have seen it. It's, just, it's been a while. Um, I watched that video and that spark happened. I said, I need to teach that class. That, that's it. A, little, a year later, that opportunity was granted to me, and little did I know the ride that was in store and how my avid students would change my life, help me become the teacher that I wanted to be, and help my why evolve from reactive to proactive. Why do I do what I do? In order to be an effective teacher, one must be willing first to be a learner. And in the years that I taught AVID, I learned more from my students than they learned from me. In helping them become the best learners they could be, 
I was forced to become the best teacher I could be. In teaching them to advocate for themselves, I found my voice as an advocate, not just for them, but for equitable systems for all kids. In helping them stay strong and persevere through seemingly insurmountable obstacles, I learned how to confront the obstacles in the very system I was a part of. In helping them learn to collaborate with their peers, I learned how to collaborate and learn from my peers. And in teaching them to ask questions and think deeply to solve problems, I found myself more readily questioning the injustices I saw in our system and working to create change. In seeing their successes, I learned to fight the cynicism that can so often arise in this extremely challenging work that we do. Why do I do what I do? Because I'm hopeful. I remember the day I told my final AVID classes that I would not be their teacher anymore. Because I was returning to school to become an, to become an administrator to get my degree in educational leadership from UW. Go Huskies. <laughs> I knew that was coming from someone out there. They were 13 and 14 and we had formed a family and they were not happy. I remember shedding tears as I explained to them that they were, my, they were my legacy, but in so many ways, I was theirs. Their stories, their successes, their failures, their perseverance, their voices, all of those things helped me know that it is possible to be part of a system that believes every child, every child, is capable of achieving at high levels, and it is our paramount duty as educators to ensure that every child who exit our, exits our doors is able to succeed in college and beyond. They made me believe we had to fight for it, and they made me hopeful. That hope has only grown, grown stronger in my work as an administrator. In his latest State of the Union address, President Obama stated, I want our actions to tell every child in every neighborhood, your life matters. And we are as committed to improving your life chances as we are for our own kids. Every day I see the teachers I am lucky enough to work with live up to that ideal. Every summer I get to work with and be inspired by my extended AVID family and rooms like this full of thousands of educators who work to live up to that ideal every day. Thank you. So why do I do what I do? Every time I'm asked that question, I can't help but have faces flash through my mind. Faces of the countless students who have touched my life and inspired me. Abby, Jorge, Miguel, I could keep going and going, but then they're going to hate me if I don't say all their names. <laughs> I do what I do for a student like Lizanne, my eager, avid seventh grader who began her education in this country as an English language learner. She graduated high school with an international baccalaureate diploma and just recently walked across the stage at the University of Washington, the first in her family ever to do so. Her diploma and the diplomas of so many more before her and after her are a symbol of hope for me and a reminder for the potential in each of us to open doors of opportunity for every student every day. And somewhere in this hope is the spirit of my sweet brother Arnie, whose absolutely beautiful life but tragic death first called me to teach. Thank you.